Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Bluefin Design and I'm Nikhil. And in this video, we are going to be talking about information architecture in UX. So as you know, we are in the middle of a UX case study and the topic of my case study is language translation. And in my previous videos, I've actually covered a lot of topics from research to analysis. And now we're in design phase of the design process. So um, as I've mentioned a lot of times, I'm going to take you through my design process where I'm going to perform different tasks and uh, through the different uh, research methods like uh, competitive analysis, user interviews, focus groups. So if you haven't watched those videos first, um, do check those out. I'll uh, leave a link down in the description. In this video, like I mentioned, we are in the design phase and my previous video was about user flows. So do check it out if you want to learn about user flows. Um, so let's uh, talk about information architecture. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what is information architecture or IA and I'll just touch up on the history because it's important to learn where we are coming from. And uh, we'll also learn about what the value of IA is and how it can impact your designs or your project or product. Uh, we'll look at some components of information architecture. But I do want to talk about the other topics like the eight principles of IA, then the processes of IA, how to design your IA for your website or a product and some good tools that you can use to make IA and some resources. But it'll be a very long video. So I'm going to break it down into two videos. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss the entire content of information architecture. So let's start. Uh, what is information architecture? So it reminds me of um, a, a quote from Jared Spool. Good design when it's done really well becomes invisible. It's only when it's done poorly that we notice it. So we only not, seem to notice the problems in the designs and when it's done really well, it becomes invisible for the users. In just a few words, information architecture is basically the practice of organizing content in a really effective way. So your entire design becomes invisible for the user. Let's talk about uh, the history of IA. So it actually goes back to the ancient Egypt where the librarians actually of like the librarians of Alexandria are listed the content of the library in like a scrollable bibliography. So they were kind of maintaining the architecture and information architecture of what's included within the library. In the early 1970s though, a company called Xerox Labs, they addressed the need for structuring the information and the practices along with it and developed the technology that would support it. But information architecture really just came about when in 1998, Peter Morville and Louis uh, Resenfold wrote the book Information Architecture for the World Wide Web. And that's when it really took off into the world of technology and websites. So what's the value of information architecture? And you may ask, like, why should I spend so much resources um, doing and improving my information architecture? Well, in today's world, information overload and really so many choices means you really must deliver the right content at the right time. And if not done really well um, for the user, if the process of finding information is really complex or complicated or just about slow, they will simply just quit and move on to do something else. So the attention span is kind of becoming less and less for the user. So it's the task of organizing content is becoming more difficult for us designers. So let's see what the value of information architecture is for the users and also for businesses. We kind of have these four points where the users are uh, looking for um, information on your website. So first one is known item seeking, where the users are actually search searching for something that they desire or something that is known to them. The second one is exploratory seeking. 
that means the users are seeking for some info inspiration for for example for for some of their projects they're looking for something that they desire but they just don't know what exactly so they're just like browsing through the third one is exhaustive research so if you're working on a project um, like you try to find as much information about that topic as you can and that process is called exhaustive research the fourth and the final one is refinding that means the user is actually in search of an item that they are aware of uh, that they've seen or heard about or um, like written or have accessed before but now they're actually looking for it again so we need to think about these four items for the users when we work on the information architecture for our product so now let's talk about some of the value that information architecture brings to businesses or companies on their products and services so the first one is naturally sales and reputations so let's say if um, a company's website is uh, kind of uh, poorly designed in terms of the information that is presented uh, the customer the existing customer or a potential customer who's looking to kind of um, use their services or products is is having some difficulty finding the right tools and right services to use um, they may lose out on uh, that customer so it directly affects the sales and the reputation of the company so it's extremely important for companies to use good information architecture on their websites and the second one is again kind of related to the first one because if the customers or if the potential customers have difficulty understanding the tools that a company is providing for their workflows um, they may not uh, get their business so they are losing out on new customers or new members so the third one is reducing marketing costs it's somewhat related to the first two in terms where in these marketing campaigns that the companies run uh, the the cost of acquiring a customer our conversion costs are actually increasing day by day because of so much competition and it becomes more important that you are able to convert the customer or cust like a potential user into a customer within uh, the least amount of time and the least amount of money spent so information architecture is actually a really really helpful in kind of organizing the content well obviously but also creating that awareness uh, or just marketing your product to the customer so that they turn into uh, a paying customer and again this is related to the seo ranking so if the the search engines like google and yahoo and and the others are not able to find the content on your website correctly they may not be able to uh, kind of place the results on the search engines uh, on the top of the list uh, can you remember the last time you went to the page two of your google results so <laughs> there you go um, it kind of uh, really affects uh, the uh, the exposure you get in terms of the people who are searching for some content and finally information architecture kind of helps companies and businesses to reduce the cost of help and customer support so uh, it kind of is self-explanatory because when the users or customers are able to find information easily on your website uh, they may uh, the chances of them reaching out to the, your customer support are reduced and hence the costs are also reduced so now let's look at some of the components of information architecture so a successful ia consists of the following components so that is organization schemes some of the examples of using successful organization schemes are alphabetical um, chronological uh, geographical uh, based on topic or topical and based on the audience now these all of these are kind of self-explanatory but uh, i'll actually include the links to the books that you can read uh, the resources that you can read to kind of learn more about these in the description so check those out as well um, the second component is the organization structure so that means your, your content is kind of uh, organized in example um, for, as an example a hierarchical manner or a sequential manner 
or in terms of like a matrix so we'll we'll look at some examples uh, just in a moment the other components are some of the labeling systems to help guide the users to where they want to go um navigation systems for example the navigation menu which in today's world we've kind of come to expect um some search systems which again in today's world we've kind of come to expect uh but let's look at some of the examples so this is uh an example of an hierarchical system of organization structure so as you may, as you can tell and uh, you, as you can understand um this is kind of like the content is divided with uh, with a certain hierarchy that applies to your product or that applies to your industry again this is credits to justinmind.com uh same goes here but this is an example for a sequential uh, manner where uh, for example if you are visiting an e-commerce website so the flow the user flow is kind of a uh, sequential wherein you search for the product or an item that you want to buy so you search for an item then you add them to the cart and you kind of like you know go in that process in that cycle until you are happy with what we want to buy and then you go forward to the checkout process and ultimately the payment so this process is kind of like a sequential process and that's a good example of um, of e-commerce um again this example is kind of like a matrix where there is no um a hierarchy but all the items are kind of connected so a good example that i want to share is if you kind of go on an educational website or an ad tech website where the, some of the courses or some of the videos are kind of connected to the other ones but in another topic so this becomes like a web that you can access through but there's no certain uh, set hierarchy or a set path but you are able to connect to different points uh, from the content hope that's understood this is an example of a labeling structure wherein the footer of a website for example mailchimp and actually like a lot of others uh, are the content is labeled as uh, stuff about the company or information about the company which includes their story uh, some of the jobs that they have um, and how to contact them and then some information about the product itself uh so they have a mobile help they have some help content and information for developers and so on so we are kind of labeling the information so the users are kind of uh, uh able to find that easily and this again is a screenshot of the amazon's website where we have a navigation system so although the users are able to search the item that they're looking for directly but amazon also has like a navigation system where they are uh, they kind of have this categories listed so you can browse through those categories as well the next one uh, the next example is a search system so again we have three examples the first one is netflix where you can just search for a movie title uh, or a show title and it'll show you the results the next one i believe is a clothing website so you'd be able to search and clothing apparel item directly and then you know see the search results the next one is uh, an example of instagram where you can like you know just search for accounts search for people search for hashtags search for locations even so there's different items that you can search on and then find content based on the search category like that's the important part so that's all for this video um in the next video i'm actually going to be talking about the principles the processes and how to design the information architecture some good tools and resources as well if you like this content please uh, leave a like on the video just down below it really helps me to grow this channel and it motivates me to share more content with you as well uh, share this video with your friends with your colleagues with your classmates so they can actually benefit from creating good information architecture and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see um good content about ux design and the entire design process 
if you have any questions just drop them down in the comments down below i'll uh, try my best to answer those and if you want to book a call with me uh, for a half hour session or a one hour session um, i've included a link uh, down in the description so it becomes easy for you to kind of schedule a call with me thank you so much for watching